It's been a wild ride in 2022. 2023 will be a change. So what we see, the semiconductor supply shortage is going to ease in 2023. However, there's also large uncertainty on add-on capacity, especially when we look at the mature nodes. Uh, what we've done in the last couple of weeks, we tried to model potential outcomes on how the capacity could pan out for 23 and beyond. And what you see here, there are a couple of structural trends in the industry. On the one hand, you see the consumer sector, such as PC notebook shipments going south in a dramatic way. So we've seen double digit declines towards the 20s um, of demand going down. And this is certainly the biggest consumption of semiconductor capacity. On the other hand, what we are still seeing that in other segments, such as automotive, the demand is still robust because there is still a lot of demand there that could not be fulfilled in the past. And uh, the companies are now working on that demand on bringing out the new cars to the customers. There are a lot of investments ongoing in the industry. On the other hand, um, we see the friction in the US-China trade war which is kind of inhibiting that trend. And more specifically, if you look into the various kinds of semiconductors, uh, we've looked into logic, MEMS, analog, memory, discrete, and opto, they're quite big differences. So on the one hand, what we see, there will be shortages that are still expected to amplify in selected areas, um, such as, as I said, automotive, uh, due to limited capex on uh, mature nodes, as well as analog and power fabs are still quite full. They're running at above 90% capacity, while on the other hand, we see the cyclical drop that is leading to a reduction in logic capacity, in memories, as well as in optoelectronics. However, uh, we see also increasing uncertainty and in inventory corrections visible when you look into the leading edge side. And the leading edge side, as you know, is the most capex intensive part of the industry where the big players like TSMC and Intel and Samsung are currently investing. In terms of leading edge technology, what role do you see Taiwan play going forward? As Taiwan is also um, a major producer of PCs, you mentioned um, decreased demand for that, but are there also big opportunities for Taiwan, such as in automotive, as we've seen, earlier during the COVID pandemic where um, German makers, automakers were relying on Taiwan. Taiwan has the prime role when it comes to leading edge semiconductors. Leading edge semiconductors, I would denominate everything below 10 nanometers. And here the majority of the world's capacity lies in Taiwan. And the big um, consumer OEMs are heavily relying on that. And now what we see Automotive companies are jumping on the, on, the, on the bandwagon because they are moving into areas like central car computing, where you need the high performance computing capabilities. And here, uh, Taiwan and especially some companies like TSMC have a leading role because they are the first ones that can create automotive grade technology on the leading edge, while others are still about to follow. And when I speak about the others, uh, obviously I'm speaking about um, Samsung Semiconductor and Intel. All of them would like to have a pie of the market. On the other hand, when you look into mature capacity and mature capacities are super interesting because this is the bread and butter business of a lot of the European IDMs as well as the European automotive and industrial companies. And here we're not speaking about 40 nanometers, not even about uh, 65 nanometers. In a lot of cases, we're still speaking about 130 and higher. I see Taiwan having a good and attractive foundry players such as Vanguard Semiconductor who are investing into that area. Nevertheless, I see Taiwan also in the mature capacity area playing a significant role as other um, industries and other companies um, are, are going to need these technologies for a long time.